Hi, Gary. Hi, Andrew. Uh, we, we really appreciate you joining us. And My pleasure. And we wanted to talk about uh, your signature gear, originally the uh, GED 2112. Then we did the um, YYZ pedal, and now we have the I-2112. So my question is uh, about the history. When and how did you first discover us? Well, it's interesting. I was trying to think back to the first time I came in touch with Tech 21 and the Sansan products. And uh, I think the first time I was introduced to it was when we were mixing counterparts, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there was a, a Australian um, mixing engineer named Michael Letho who was mixing that. And he insisted on having a Sansamp in the room for mixing. And uh, I said, what is that about that device that you like? And he said, I just find it really flexible. Anytime we need a bit of uh, what he would refer to as fairy dust uh, on a sound, uh, he could plug it in and tweak it up. So I think it was him. I mean, I could be mistaken. It might've been earlier than that, but I think it was him. Anyway, so I really, Doug, what he did, he added some to my top end bass sound, and it was one of the guitar sans amps, and it added a really cool amount of distortion. So I think right. what happened was after that album was finished, before that tour started, uh, one of my management personnel contacted Time Rogers at Tech 21 because he he knew Time, and I think Time had been pitching him uh, to let me try out some of their gear anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started a relationship, and they sent me a couple of sand amps, and I integrated it into my rig, and uh, it sort of developed from there. And then the RBI came out, and and so I think from that day forward, I had a relationship with those products. Right, right. And I know that eventually you went to the from the RBI to the RPM, mm -hmm. which is the parametric EQ, I guess you find uh, more flexibility or what was the reason you moved on? Uh, I just liked experimenting with the different changes that were going on and I found that the, the second device that I got gave me more fine control over uh, uh, adjusting the tone that I wanted. Um, and for those who don't know, your signature gear is based upon that circuitry, correct? That, that's right, yeah. That's right. And then we added some other features like the uh, beat channel, which right. gives you all the bottom end. I don't know if you had time to play around with some of the new products that we have a tight switch. Yes. Uh, what do you think about that tight switch? Uh, well, I really like the tight switch, especially for certain bases. Like if you have, uh, for example, yesterday I was playing with the... Uh, um, the pedal with the tight switch the first time we integrated the tight switch into it. And uh, I was playing a Gibson Thunderbird bass, which is not a normal bass for me. It's not a bass that I'm normally recognized with, but that has a tremendous amount of deep bottom end coming out of those Gibsons. Right. Uh, and uh, so I like to crank many things in my sound I know so I, had the, I have the bass up quite full and and you get a bit of waffle that's happening so when i put the tight switch in i don't really lose bottom but i lose waffle and it just brings the sound into a, a closer tighter configuration and allows me to play those uh, to, to have that much bottom end and still keep it under control so i really like that aspect right right that's great was there anything that surprised you when we developed these products? Any surprises? Well, I mean, when going from, uh, when we first did the rack mounted version, I was really pleased at how accurately it reproduced the different, um, you know, devices I was using and all in one package. So I was really pleased with that. Uh, secondly, when we reduced it into the pedal format, I was, surprised how accurately I could get the tone out of what I was used to getting in such a small package. So right. I've been really pleased with the development of all those various versions of uh, the the gear that I've been uh, doing with you guys. So yeah, uh, and uh, I want to, you know, 
put this out there that I really appreciate that you went along with the uh, pedal version because I know that personally you would not use a pedal, but you understood the need of many of the players who are playing smaller clubs and need light gear to have a, a small and portable unit. And then we tried to compress all that sound in there. So I guess we were successful. You were successful. And I was uh, hesitant because I said, well, I don't want to put my name on something that I don't use. That's right. Uh, and Scully, my tech and I, we discussed it back and forth numerous times. And he was very uh, adamant that, uh, you know, there's a market of players that really would like to have that portability. And right. so I said, well, you know, I'm from Missouri, show me. Mm -hmm. So when the prototype came through and I saw how uh, well packaged it was and, and how, uh, I guess, close to the, my sound uh, you can get out of that pedal, then I was really pleased. And I said, well, that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Exactly. And nowadays, you know, pedals are really, really popular. People have like paddle boards, even bass players. Yeah. And that's how they build their, their gear. And, uh, you know, we need to be part of that. And, and this actually shows the numbers too, that this is the, actually the highest selling uh, product now. You okay. know, of, out of the three. Although we just came out with the new one, the DI 2112. Right. And that one has a very good reception too. So we are looking forward to, to see what that's going to do because that one works on 18 volts, so it has more headroom. Right. It, we call it the desktop or amp top unit because you right. don't need to turn it off. It's right. always on, right? So it really follows the original concept that you guys had with the rack mount that you don't need to change channels or turning it off. You just need one good sound. Yeah. Um, off topic just a little bit, is there any new hobbies you developed during this lockdown? <laughs> uh, well, my main, uh, my main hobby during lockdown is uh, spending time with my grandson. Uh, we, oh. were, we were away um, together uh, when the outbreak happened. Where, where were you? And, and so we were in Jamaica on holiday uh, for his spring break, which is earlier than the U.S. spring break. I see. And uh, so when we got the notification that we have to come back to Canada and lock down, we, we sort of uh, locked down together. I see. We were already together. In a group and group. that's been a great help to my son and uh, my daughter-in-law's uh, work schedule because, of course, they're working from home mm -hmm. and he can't go to school. So he's schooling from home. So there's about three how hours. Old is he, uh, I'm sorry, how old is sorry, he? Sorry, just, he just turned six years old. So um, uh, there's about three hours a day that I get to spend with him uh, during wow. the week. That's and, really great. I, I heard that from many people that this really brings the families together more than anything else in the past. Yeah, well, to me, that uh, as frustrating as it's been, it's been a hidden blessing because, you know, we're very close and we get to do a lot of things. He's learning baseball. He's really keen. So we're out in the backyard throwing and we're watching old games on TV and he wants to learn the finer points and all that. Uh, and he's just such a sweet kid. And it's just nice that we're able to be around for him at a time that could be very stressful otherwise. So Definitely. it turned a negative into a positive. That's what you need to do. You know, if things are going to go back to normal, you come to New York, Let's hang out. Let's have a nice dinner. That would be great. I would enjoy because that. Because we always have a nice conversation. I always, uh, you know, enjoy uh, our time together. And I, I do personally very much appreciate you being on board because I'm one of those immigrants who came to this country with $300 in my pocket. And I built this company because of people like you who recognize the uh, quality and, and uh, the heart that I put into it. And I couldn't do it without you. So... Thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, you know, I believe in the products and I like the relationship we have. And so uh, I'm glad things are going well. And uh, Great. Thank stay you. safe and I look forward to having dinner together. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Getty. All right. Take Thanks. care, man. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Tim Storacci from Tech 21. And today I'm going to show you the Getty Lee DI-2112 Signature Sans Amp. We have two independent channels, each with their own XLR and quarter-inch output, and each with their own independent level that you can blend as you want, 
either to two separate power amps or two amplifiers. So it's basically the same DNA that's in the GED 2112 rack mount. Uh, the same signal pass, the same ability to, to separate the channels, but with the added coolness from the YYZ pedal with the tight switch, which removes some lower frequencies from the drive channel and tightens things up. You know, gives you more attack, a uh, little bit more brilliance, sizzle, sparkle, you know, uh, and uh, really becomes apparent when you're really digging in. So let me run over how it sounds, okay? Now, if I pull out the, the deep channel, you'll hear just the drive channel. Now it's still a full frequency channel, but if I engage the tight switch, it takes out some more lows from that. You could hear the difference when we do that. Now let's do just the deep channel. Clean, tight lows with its own saturation, you know, add a little character to that. Okay, so here's the, here's the basic layout of the pedal. It's divided into, into two sections. You have a deep section with its own individual level and own XLR or quarter inch output. There's a level control for that and a saturation control. Now we have the drive section, which has its own dedicated XLR as well as a quarter inch out. Uh, level control, blend control, mid-level, drive, treble, bass, and a mid shift, which goes from 170 hertz to 3000 hertz. There's a ground lift, there's a 20 dB pad for the XLR, a 10 dB boost for the quarter inch, of course, the tight switch that we went over earlier, and a mute switch. And then you, you have this blue LED, which will flash while you play, letting you know that you're getting a signal coming out of the pedal. Like every Tech 21 Signature Series product, they're not just one-trick ponies. They can get anything that you need from clean to dirty, everything in between, and it's just an extremely versatile product. And, uh, you know, let me run through a couple things for you. The DI2112 uses an 18-volt power supply for increased headroom and can also be used with two 9-volt batteries.